Hey, it's time for a, I guess a celebration <laughs> of sorts. One year, let's get out of this echoey, uh, empty, hollow existence that I live in. <laughs> it doesn't sound beautiful. I don't know, it's not just, it's, it's an empty house. Well, the life is what it is. Um, and it's a good life, and it's been a year. I left Japan uh, and consequently arrived in the United States one year ago today, February 26th, 2014. 14, I said goodbye. Um, and then I began my job February 27th, 2014. So t tomorrow's an anniversary as well. So to celebrate, I'm going to stop and... Oh, look at that pretty little light over there. Can you see the, uh, the glow, the rise on the horizon? Just a little bit over there. I'm going to celebrate with a little... I'm going to stop by the Starbucks, the ghetto Starbucks, and get myself a cup of coffee. Uh, to, to, to celebrate this morning. So I thought I'd, I, I'd turn the camera on to mark the event and I wanted to a, um, answer a question from myself. <laughs> the question is, because that's just the kind of guy I am. Um, the, qu the question is, would I do it again? Knowing what I know now, one year um, without my family alone in, in an alien land, um, would, I, would I do it again uh, knowing, knowing what I know? And I went through three stages of answering. I usually don't rehearse my videos. I really don't even rehearse the answers of the thoughts or the stream of consciousness. I just, uh, how do you rehearse a stream of consciousness? You kind of can. You can set up the bullet points, but I don't. But I did kind of this, this one before I turned the button on. And I went through three things. And this was really, cogn I was cogitating last night. I had a hard time sleeping last night. I, I slept maybe two hours last night. I just laid in bed. I uh, watched a lot of YouTube videos. I watched YouTube videos about uh, my daughter's coming life. Um, I, I won't go into details, but there's, there's, there's a lot of YouTube videos uh, showing what her life is going to be like. I don't want to give the details because I don't want to talk about, give any details about, where, about her. So I'll just leave that to myself, so I'll watch those. But okay, the three things. One was, if I, if I knew that I would be alone for a year without my family, that's the tricky part, is that being separated from my family and not being an influence on my daughter or a partner to my wife, if I knew that, one, would I, would I have come again? And the first thought was, no, I wouldn't have come. And then the second thought was, yes, I would have been sneaky. I would have brought the whole family over with, you know, with a put a goofy hat on and said, we're all going to Disneyland because we've come over many times before, and then just stayed. And then I thought, no, that's not. I'm a spirit of the law and a letter of the law kind of guy. I, uh, if, I, if I catch myself speeding, I, I do slow down. And I thought, no, I don't want to do that because that violates both. Um, and in terms of immigration. So the third thought I thought was, I would do it differently. That's what it was. I mean, I, what I would do is, oh goodness, I see a, yeah, the empty, burned out house over there. It has a water fountain over there. It was just a, uh, I'll go check it as I drive by. Uh, who do I report it to? Well, I'll tell my neighbor um, <clears throat> down the street if that happens because they're kind of a community act, community watch type of thing. So I'll check that as I leave. But anyway. Um, the third thing was I, what I would do is I would do it differently and I would do it legally. And what I would do is I would have packed my family up, taken out our visas, came across, or maybe I would have come up and come over initially by myself just to get things set up and would just come over probably and just bring them over, set up house, and then every three months, because my wife has a three-month tourist visa, remember my daughter's dual citizenship, so no problem for her, I would just, Yumiko would hop on a plane and fly back to the United States. I'm back to Japan and, and and then stay for a week or a couple of days or just overnight with her family, visit them, and then come back every three months. We would have had to do this. I, what an idiot I was. Why didn't I think about this? this is, it would have been so much cheaper, too. And we have spent supporting two households across two nations, uh, across two of the most expensive countries in the world, especially Southern California, my gosh. I mean, it's been very... I'm. I'm uh, I, I'm, I'm all right, but it's but it's but it's been very challenging to 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 keep all that going. Private school and, and all this stuff, and, and the secondary expenses that go along with it. So, it, I mean, the airfare would have been trivial uh, in comparison. So why didn't I think to do that? So that's what I would have done. Brought it over and just send her back and renew her tourist visa every three months, and then start the process of um, of. Uh, the immigration process from here. And I think that we, that would have been okay. That would have been in good faith for the process. I think that's what I, well, I don't think about it. I know that's what I've done. It's too late now. 
she's in the system. My wife's in the system. And uh, if she tries to get in now, uh, they'll, they'll, the, her application stuff will appear on the immigration system. And that'll, that'll be a red flag, and she probably won't get in. So it's too late now. We have to push through. So what will, So that's the answer to that question. How would I have done it differently? Second, let me just see if I can summarize a couple things real quick right here. Um, am I glad I came? Yes and no. Um, no, simply for the fact that I, I lost a year of life with my family and the separation and the distance. and it's, you, I can't get it back. But I, con I console myself with the thought that I'm, and Mimiko and I are giving ourselves a, our daughter, our, our really our, our daughter and ourselves. We gave ourselves an adventure and we're giving our daughter Two, two worlds and two countries. And that's what we set out for. I don't know if I've explained that. I probably have. I'll just real quick. I'll say that's what we set out for when Emily was born from the time to zero to three. We were here and we were thinking about it and we thought the best way to give her both cultures is just, just cut ties here, go over to Japan for uh, a decade or so and then bring Emily back when she turns a teenager. That's what we're fulfilling, that mission that we had from the beginning. And we thought that, that would give her both cultures. So, yeah, so uh, it was worth it for that. Um, so yeah, I would do it again. I would do it differently, though, and I would, uh, I would have fought more. That's always the case. I'm too dang spontaneous. Well, it's time to go. I have to get to work. Uh, begin uh, celebrate my year here, and I've got a busy weekend ahead of me. I'm looking for uh, with the possibility that my daughter might be coming over in uh, to start the school year in September or August. I mean, I'm, I'm might she might come over by herself in case my wife's visa stuff is still pending. If that's going to happen, then um, uh, I'm going to be looking for a, or maybe even the first part of summer, I'm going to be looking for a, a cram school for her a, in the Irvine area. And there are a lot. I've already begun my search. I mean, that place down there has just cram schools, whole campuses of cram schools. And I found one in particular that I was really excited about. I'm going to go back there and see it again tomorrow. They've actually got a 15-year-old a, a Japanese girl in the school as well who, kind of like Emily, has arrived and is going to be going to the same high school that Emily is going to be going to. So I'm hoping I can get Emily over, get her enrolled in that, maybe meet that girl. You know, parents have these dreams of matchmaker. Oh, you'd be great. You know, the two of you together, go have fun. My, my concern is, though, that without my wife, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working, I work long hours, and um, I, have to, I don't want Emily coming home to, alone to, a, to, to an empty apartment. Um, so I've got to be strategic about all this. And, uh, yeah. So we'll see. Okay, I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to. I think my heart of heart is, going to, is that this is going to work out. We're going to get the get good news from the uh, I, I, from the NBC and go forward from there. And my Emily and will come over together. Help just contingent this. My water's over there. Sunlight's over there. My car's over there. My backpack's in here. Let's go back into the hollow, hollow, hollow mansion. <laughs> just nothing in here. But there's there's the warm, glowing spirit of uh, a life attempting to live. And uh, hey, isn't that right? Yes, indeed. Who's that guy? Okay, talk to you later. later. Thank you. Happy year. I'm going to go get a cup of coffee now. Yay. Latte. See ya.